Good evening, good evening, and welcome along to another big show here on NVTV. Hope we found you well this evening. And look who's back, by the way. Yes, I'm back. Did you miss me? Of course, yes. <laughs> Coming up on the show, Robin will be catching up with the Stuart Bailey, talking about some live events coming up, celebrating the music of Van Morrison at the Eastside Arts Festival this year. Now, as well as that, uh, they say never work with uh, children and animals. Well, we went to Newry during the week to catch up with a parrot called um, Lucky Angel, who's a little bit special. Isn't Very he? special. Yeah, he swears every time Donald Trump comes on the TV. Yes. And he loves singing along to the music of ABBA and uh, Doris Day. But the big question is, will he do it for us? Find out what happens as we caught up with uh, Lucky Angel and his owner a little bit later on. Plus, we have some live music from the archives, haven't we? We do. We have live music from Steve Forbert from the archives. And ahead of his gig at uh, the East Side Arts Festival, we're going to take a look at something from Joshua Burnside as well. But let's get things underway. And as we mentioned, the East Side Arts Festival, it's that time of year already. And it's back between the 6th and the 16th of August. Lots of things happening online and outdoors as well this year. And there's uh, some very special music events coming up uh, celebrating the career of Van Morrison. I've been chatting to Stuart Bailey all about some events that he's organising. Here's what happened. So Stuart, uh, tell us about these uh, Van Morrison gigs that uh, you have coming up. Of course, uh, Van's also celebrating a big uh, birthday soon. He's going to be 75, isn't he? He is, uh, and I can remember doing stuff for Van's 60th birthday party, and at that stage you thought, God, he's really old. <laughs> uh, so he's 75 now, and bless him he's still advertising gigs for 2021 he's he's uh, you know I, I don't think retirement is an option and uh and, and i've been writing about him for as long as i can remember and i thought uh, how do we kind of uh, celebrate this milestone and and then i started going through the lists of all the van songs and i says well what if i wrote about 75 songs like reviewed 75 songs and explained why I liked them and what the stories I thought they were, you know, created in my head and, and, and what part of Van's career. So, so I, I, I'm still in the process of writing it. Um, it's, it's keeping me awake at night and it, it's keeping me excited as well. And, and actually a big fight to say which 75 songs do you pick? Because unlike some artists who've got five great songs, Van Morrison's songbook is just incredible. So um, I, I'm fighting with myself going, do you put that song on the subs bench or do you, do, you know, does that one make the cut? And obviously there's all the big faves. So, so with these side arts, we thought, well, let's kind of um, make people aware of the book before we, we, we launch it properly. And uh, we're going to have a night on the 15th of August. I think it's an online experience. It's going to be a gig, but we can't bring an audience in, sadly. But it's myself reading parts of the book, which is picking songs and, re and around, you know, doing a little bit of script about them. But also we've got Ursula Burns with her harp. We've got Anthony Toner, who's picked two great songs. We've got Hannah McFullamy and we have got Paul McMarty. And Paul McMarty's this incredible jazz freestyle guitar player. So he's going to turn Van Morrison songs inside out in a very creative way. And... Uh, there may be a rickety wheel or something to kind of pick songs at chance, or it might be bingo balls, or I'm not quite sure, but I think we should um, put a, a, a bit of sport into it where, where, where randomly song numbers come up and, and, and then, then, then I rate from them or whatever, or perhaps people can choose numbers. So we're going to have fun. So it sounds like um, a great event, and of course um, it's a big year for anniversaries as well because uh, the Moondance album, 50 years old this year as well. Yeah, yeah, and I've been spending a lot of time, the, my, one of my favourite ever Van songs is And It Stoned Me. That whole album, every song is a hit, every song is a radio tune, and uh, And It Stoned Me is, is apparently based on a fishing trip up Cumber, Ballystockert Road. So I've been kind of driving around trying to find any fishing spots, you know, where Van might have got his fishing rod out. And, and I've been taking photographs of it and all of that. So Moondance is glorious. Obviously, the title track is, is, is magnificent. Into the Mystic, Brand New Day. You know, it, it just goes on and on and on. And Astro Weeks, the record that preceded that, was very artistic and free jazz and free association 
And I think he just thought to himself, right, I'm going to give these people a bag of tunes and Moon Dance is a bag of tunes and uh, it'll never grow old. It's just absolute classic. Now, what about uh, Van covers over the years? Because uh, so many people have covered his music. Uh, my favourite has to be uh, the Marianne Faithful version of uh, Madame George. Yes, because she gets into the, the drama of the character of Madame George. And, and I think that's a great one. Uh, I think Dusty Springfield in Chibolo Hummy is, is also an incredible one. And she's got a, an extra verse, which Van, I think, wrote but, but never got around to recording. So, so it's, it's as well as Dusty Springfield just taking it to heaven as a song, there's an extra verse in it. So that, that always fills me with joy, you know, and uh, the, the number of uh, bands that have done incredible versions of Gloria over the years, yeah. people like Patti Smith and The Doors. So, so he, he, his, his songbook is just, you know, I think, I think by now, I, and I, I, I'm a terrible Van Boer, but I, I, I think people appreciate how great he was. But, you know, we'll have to keep banging on forever about how absolutely super duper great he is because it's just mood songs. You can be born to a Van Morrison song, you, get, you fall in love to a Van song. You get married to a Van song and you get buried to a Van song. He just covers every mood and every occasion in your life. So, you know, I th- I will probably go into the crematorium uh, while Van is singing Into the Mystic, you know. You know, you, 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 I'm, I'm at that stage of my life where you have to consider these things, Robin, you know. What a great way to go, Into the Mystic. <laughs> When that foghorn b- blows out, you know, I'll be coming home again, you know, and uh, as an East Belfast uh, chap, then th- th- that's the way to go. You have to have an East Belfast person singing you uh, in your last journey, really. And of course, uh, Van is still making some great music today. I heard the new uh, Dion album, uh, Blues with Friends, that he appears on. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the stuff he was doing with Robbie Robertson recently as well, uh, I hear you paint houses and... Uh, more of that, I think, as well. You know, more of other people kind of bringing him into a different zone. Um, but yes, and, and, and every now and again, you hear someone who's who's connected with Van over the years and you go, he's got this cupboard full of stuff that's never been released. And I would fully uh, appreciate and understand that. And, you know, bit by bit, those treasures will hopefully see the light of day. Now, you mentioned uh, Robbie Robertson there, and I was thinking earlier on that I must uh, re-watch uh, The Last Waltz at some point, which has got to be one of the greatest uh, concert films of all time. Well, it is. And, um, you know, the, 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 the two tracks that we know that Van did, he did Tura Lura Lura, uh, which is gorgeous and, and sentimental and, and, and silly. And then he does Caravan, and he's wearing his purple jumpsuit. And... Uh, Apparently, was it Harvey Goldsmith was managing at the time said he was he had terrible stage fright because Dylan's there and um, you know the, the Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and all of these incredible people and then Van's there and and he he, he had to be sort of encouraged onto the stage shall we say and then the music ran through him and you can see him get more and more enraptured and then uh, towards the end and, and Caravan's just got the big brass arrangement and then the feet start, he starts kicking his legs in the air as you know and it just you just you're just cheering and whooping when you watch it it's just someone who is almost beyond themselves in terms of how music there you know Van's a channel for music and when the music is running through him there is nothing like it in the world it's just incredible we're just so gifted to have that human being making that um, music in the sphere of popular culture and that he's he's one of us he's a belfast boy now you obviously must have met van uh, many times over the years <laughs> <laughs> i've had encounters robin yeah uh, and, and they're not for 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 conversation in a moment like this but um, I think we've we've had we've had some chat, uh, n- none of it super significant, some of it slightly uh, traumatic, and uh, someday I think me and Van will sit down and have a cup of tea and 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 uh, have a proper uh, rounded conversation. But you know, it's the music that I'm I'm into, and and uh, you know, it's not about necessarily the individual and 
being being best mates with the individual. Sometimes as a as a journalist and a broadcaster, as you know, you're you're not destined to be best buddies with some of these people. They say never meet your heroes, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Now, what about the book? Uh, when can we expect to see that? Well, I think we're going to do a Kickstarter uh, probably around the time of the uh, August, around that time. And I think uh, you, uh, you've got a bit of an exclusive on this event. We'll probably have 75 sponsors so you can pay to have your name and your favorite band song at the front of the book and help to make it happen. And I would like to have it out, I would say, late, late September, October. All right, it's certainly not long after his birthday. We, 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 there were plans ahead of the pandemic to do something very, very beautiful and very um, uh, full uh, connected with, with a van book. And then everything obviously has just uh, been been thrown into confusion. So this is a not necessarily a stopgap, but it, it's something that can be done without uh, having to sit in libraries or, or have in-depth interviews with people in person. And so, so it allows me to, to be free. And also my last book, Troubled Songs, was very dark and deep. And I just thought, well, why don't you just write about your favorite band song? Because it's going to be a, a, a relatively light and positive experience. Yeah. And uh, so we'll get it out. And uh, it'll be out well, well ahead of Christmas. And, um, you know, I think the concert will be super special. I've done a little bit of work. We've made some videos with a filmmaker, Will McConnell, and they're also going to be part of the festival. And it's me kind of talking about Conswater River, talking about Cypress Avenue, Hindford Street, Orangefield Park. And, uh, and that's been great fun as well. So that will be out around the same time. So um, eastsidearts.net is where you can find all the info. Stuart, uh, great talking to you as always. Uh, the very best of luck with the book. And uh, we look forward to the 15th of August. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. And for more information on what's happening at this year's East Side Arts Festival, just check out the website eastsidearts.net. Time for some live music from the archives now. And uh, singer-songwriter Steve Forbert is back with a new album called Early Morning Rain. He sent this to me the other day, so I'll get a chance to listen to it over the next few days. But in the meantime, here's what happened the last time Steve Forbert was in the Big Show studio. If winds calm down to nothing... Leaves will still be rustling in the magic tree When nothing else is doing Something's always brewing in the magic tree Boys with their boards and their heads held high Built up their house near the big blue sky and while the way the hours soaking up the powers of the magic tree who grew up tall with his roots down deep who'll guard them all and their secrets keep when nothing else is making it Something's always shaking in a magic tree Who grew up tall with his roots down deep Who'll guard them all in their secrets Keep when all my cares have doubled I can take my troubles to the magic tree When nothing else is pleasant Good is always present in the magic tree There's not much left of the neighborhood but my, my dear old friend, I see that you've withstood And even though it's snowing Love is up to growing in the magic tree Yes, even though
now it's a snowing Love is up there growing in a magic tree And coming up, we'll have some more live music from Joshua Burnside. Now, what was the very first uh, concert that you ever went to? Can you remember? Of course I remember, Robin. Well, tell us in just a minute, because uh, the reason why we're talking about this is uh, the other day on the radio, a lady called Mary got in touch with us, and she was reminiscing about seeing a singer called Tiny Tim play in the Ulster Hall way back in the 1960s. Do you remember Tiny Tim? I've heard the name. I, I remember the name being bandied about, but I can't remember what he's saying, no. Tiptoe through the tulips. Strange guy, strange voice. <laughs> I heard it for the first time the other day. Check him out on YouTube if you've ever wondered whatever happened to uh, Tiny Tim. But because of that, we started asking people on the radio about uh, the very first live concert that they ever saw. Loads of people got in touch with us. Tell us about yours. I actually can't remember the first live gig that I that I saw, but you can remember yours, can't you? Yes, and I was about to tell you there with, with pure excitement and left my mouth wide open because <laughs> you wouldn't let me say it there and then. My first concert that I went to see was, believe it or not, Kylie Minogue. And everyone kept on saying, oh, you're not going to see Kylie Minogue. She can't even sing. And I used to say to them, I'm telling you, I know that girl has something. I went to see the show and it was absolutely incredible. I went alone because no one would go with me. And when I came out, I said, that girl is going places. And you know what? I also said, you're all going to eat your words. And uh, yeah, they definitely did. And not only that, didn't she reinvent herself and over reinvent herself again and reinvent herself again. And she's one of the best pop performers that we have and of course she's back right now with a brand new uh, disco album as well uh, check it out lots of mixed reviews about it but did you know as well one of the first times Kylie ever appeared in Northern Ireland her and Jason Donovan did an appearance at a shopping centre in Portadown oh wow did they yeah. no I didn't know that right okay first concerts people have been in touch what have we got well we have got Paris uh, said Madonna at Wembley in 1987 she was only 7 wow what a great gig uh, Lorraine Wilson, Howard Jones, and Jim Clark, Erasure in 1989, the Wild Tour, I saw that as well. Yeah? Yeah, I okay. definitely remember that. Um, and Arlene Watson said she saw Cliff Richard and The Shadows back in the 60s. That must have been in the King's Hall, I would imagine, back I, then yes. as well. That's where I saw Kylie. There you go. Right, uh, Les McGrath got in touch with us. His first show was in Canada. What about this for a first show? His was John Lee Hooker in the Colonial Tavern on Young Street in Toronto. Saturday afternoon matinee in July 1969. I sat about four feet in front of him. And as it was a bar, I uh, could have a beer as well. What about that? Oh, so John Lee amazing. Hooker performed live. Uh, Peter Cochran got in touch as well. And uh, his first concert was uh, the late, great uh, Gary Moore with uh, the Barons. It was a uh, Windsor Tennis Club on the Malone Road. He was playing a white Telecaster. And he played Hey Joe behind the head and all. He was about 16. I was younger. And that must have been sometime between uh, 1965 and uh, 1967. Right, what else have we got? Carol Clark, Bay City Rollers in the ABC Cinema in 1975. She said she couldn't hear a thing with all the screaming, I can imagine. And there's Marie Campbell, says uh, her first concert was also the Bay City Rollers in Belfast. Uh, was the best time ever. And Geraldine Walsh, Fleetwood Mac with the legendary Peter Green. Of course, uh, he sadly passed away um, last week at the age of uh, 73, but the original classic lineup of uh, Fleetwood Mac there. Uh, Pauline Buller, her first gig was uh, Thin Lizzy somewhere in Belfast in the early 1970s. She says, I remember being at the front of the stage, looking up and thinking, what long legs that boy had. <laughs> Obviously talking about the late great uh, Phil Lynott. Yes, and then Ken Martin, Roy Rogers and Trigger. Now I've heard loads of stories about the time that uh, Roy Rogers and Trigger 
came to Belfast. Uh, lots of myths as well. But apparently Trigger stayed in his own room in the house. Oh, and right. Went up the stairs and, and everything. So, oh, um, gosh. Right, okay. So there we go. Oh, we've got one here from May Meehan. She's seen Tommy Steele in the Hammersmith Palais many moons ago, she says. And uh, Bridge Kearney, her first gig was Horse Lips at uh, Queen's in Belfast. She said it was an absolutely fantastic night. And Sandra Lochran, Prince in Dublin, with my now husband of almost 25 years. Oh, what a memory. And uh, finally for now, Jeff Hill's first gig was Eric Clapton at uh, Crystal Palace in 1976. He says, I got the back of my head in an NME pick, my first heady taste of fame. So there we go, some of uh, your first concerts. Now, some of the things that we've been watching on Netflix over the past uh, few weeks. What have you been watching? Well, Robin, you know exactly what I've been watching because I've been torturing Robin, watching a programme called Heartland. It is set in Hudson in Canada and uh, on a ranch, uh, all about cowboys, horses, family life. It is just so addictive. Believe it or not, I am now on uh, series 11, episode eight, and, uh, and I'm completely hooked. Okay, here's a clip from Heartland. <laughs> I love our little family. Environment Canada has issued a severe storm watch for the foothills area. I mean, this is going to break us. I need to fix this. Or it won't break. This is a story only I can tell. Only I have lived this life. When I was your age, I put this place in my rear view mirror and I wasn't ever coming back. Where I'm going, I know it well. Time for That's so sad. She was only 17. How stupid can you be? Horse killer. That's enough. All right. Tough guy now. Okay. 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 Always take care of the ones you love. And wherever you go, you take a piece of this place with you. Keep it close to your heart. series and there is a new one on the way number 14 can't wait right uh, moving on to something else and of course uh, lots of people disappointed that uh, the eurovision song contest didn't take place this year but you can watch uh, the eurovision song contest the fire saga which is uh, streaming now on netflix uh, will ferrell rachel mcadam and uh, pierce brosnan all starring in that the story of uh, two young singers from a little small town in iceland who dream about becoming pop stars and take taking part in the Eurovision Song Contest. Here's a clip. Ever since we were children, we've had one dream. Winning the Eurovision Song Contest. All right, everyone. I am Lars. This is Secret. We are Fire Saga. Who wants to hear our Eurovision song? All of Iceland thinks we are a joke. That's not true. And my father is ashamed of me. No, he's not. He looked me into the eyes and said, I am ashamed of you. Maybe he was drunk. He said, and you might think that I'm drunk, but I am dead sober. Idiot. Officially, Fire Saga will be representing Iceland at Eurovision this year. I hate them. Absolutely terrible. They're old, disgusting people. But we have no choice. So we're in. Yep. 42 countries, hundreds of performers, and a worldwide audience of 180 million. This is Eurovision. Woo! Oh, wow. You have to watch that guy. He is a sex player. Hey, looking good. Secret, very beautiful voice. Thank you. We are a duo that will never be separated. George Michael said something about other wham guy. <laughs> no one even knows his name. Andrew Ridgely. You have to stay focused. We need to win. What are you doing? I just want my ding dong to look bigger than what is really there. Smart. Yeah. I could do a camel. Do a classic camel. It's never out of style. Yeah. This is it. We have to prove to Iceland and my extremely handsome father that my life hasn't been a waste. Oh, did 
for both of us. Lars, you are a dreamer. My dreamer. Ah, we can't. Really? Romance, it ruins the bands. Fleetwood Mac, Ace of Base, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, I forgot about Simon. Where the mountains sing to the screams of seagulls. Mars Harger are not giving up. Tonight is our night. You don't have a single chance of making it. <laughs> Stop laughing, I'm trying to fight you! <laughs> so Eurovision Song Contest, uh, The Fire Saga is uh, streaming now on Netflix. It's all good camp fun and uh, the main song in it will get stuck in your head, won't it? It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant and of course it will definitely stick in your head. Okay, right, uh, time now for something a little bit different. We're going to meet, uh, or try to meet, a character called uh, Lucky Angel, a talking parrot who can't stand uh, Donald Trump. He swears every time Trump comes on the TV. He also apparently sings along to the music of ABBA and uh, Doris Day, and he's not bad at picking the lotto numbers as well, I believe, isn't he? Yes, I hear that too, yes. So uh, the other day we caught up with um, Lucky Angel's owner, Mary, and uh, Lucky Angel himself. Here's what happened. Here's that angel. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know what they say on TV, never work with animals. We're going to find out if this is actually going to work today or not. Before we can hear Lucky Angel say something to us, let's talk to his owner and uh, find out all about this uh, fabulous parrot. How long have you had him for? Um, It would be roughly coming now over two years. So how did you discover that he could do all all this talented stuff? Um, It was quite a shock at the start because it took a couple of weeks when I got him to get to know me. And then he started uh, calling different things out, like we have a cat outside and I call it Ginger Tom. And he would tell Ginger Tom to go away when he would come to the window looking in at him, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> now, he's very musical as well. He likes a bit of music, mm, doesn't he? He loves uh, Taylor Swift and um, Tones. He loves that dance monkey. <laughs> and Whitney Houston. <laughs> I even He ha- even had me buy an Alexa because I can play any tune now for him. I believe he loves the musicals as well, a bit of ABBA, a bit of Sound yeah, of Music. Yeah, I had it on the television there and he, his little head was going to and fro when he's watching something like ABBA or Mamma Mia. He loves the musical, Mamma oh, Mia. Nice. So now that he's getting all this attention, what's your kind of hopes for him? Is he, is he going to become the next big Northern Ireland celebrity? Well, we hope that he... It's a bit of fun and we'll see how it goes. Um, he's just four and they lived over 70. Right. So I have a lot of years to train him yet. <laughs> So how much training goes into it? You do stuff with them every day. Yes, I would. Um, sometimes I read things to him and mm-hmm. he would um, come out with different funny things like, are you going to work? And um, bubbles. He's taken off from bubbles. Uh, I showed him some funny thing on the Wonderbirds and um, one of the girls, Debbie, I think it was. I know was, Debbie Arnold. Do you? I know Debbie. I, I did a play with Debbie Arnold. <laughs> well, as soon as he's seen Debbie, he says, bubbles. Bubbles. And he keeps on saying bubbles every time he's seen the Wonder Birds. And I can't get him to stop now. So he does funny things like that. Like yeah. the vet uh, last year when she came to cut his nails, he uh, quite abruptly told her to F off and not come back. <laughs> Which was a shock to us all. That I didn't even get it on camera. That was the worst part oh, of it. It was okay. so quick out of his... She couldn't believe it either. She was in shock. <laughs> Now, I see out of the corner of my eye, over in the corner of the room there, there's a, a painting, mm. which I believe he assisted in, didn't he? Over this last couple of weeks, we were um, footing around with acrylics. You know, I love acrylics. And um, I had him hold the brush as we put the lines through. And the little thin lines. So I said, well, that's a contribution. But I had to hold the brush, like, <laughs> and he helped me with it, you know. All right. But it's a start. It is, okay. So he, he can sing, he can uh, paint, uh, he's into politics. What else can he do? He plays cards as well, doesn't well, he? Well, yeah, I, I I was just doing like a solitaire with him, you know. But he was picking out the right cards, you know, the, the diamonds, and he was going for all the coloured cards. He didn't like the low, the low numbers. <laughs> he liked the king and the queen and the jack and the ace. <laughs> So that was quite funny, I thought, you know. And then uh, he won me a little bit of money on a scratch card. Right. Yeah, when I got him the first week, I was amazed. Um, I never buy um, five pound scratch cards. And this time I did, and I got 500 on it. Okay. So that's how I ended up calling him lucky. 
Right. His okay. name was originally just Angel. Right. And yeah. then I said, I'm going to call you Lucky after that. Okay. We, we should maybe get him to uh, pick the lottery numbers yeah. for this yeah. week, shouldn't we? I would we, love we that, <laughs> but I've been trying no, to no avail. I've been trying that. Let me tell you. Oh, I would love that. So what? But so he has his own uh, Facebook page as well, doesn't he? Yes, he does indeed, yeah. And um, he just loves um, doing different silly things and um, he loves music. He definitely does love music. I can see that any time uh, I put the Alexa on. He just loves dancing away till it, you know. All right. So that's all we have time for on the big show this week to play us out uh, something else from uh, the archives and uh, we're talking about uh, this year's Eastside Arts Festival uh, Joshua Burnside is playing a very special gig at the Ballyhackamore Working Men's Club on the 6th of August and here's what happened the last time Joshua Burnside was in the big show studio we'll see you next time bye bye see you then The ghosts are on patrol At the bottom of the hill Where I held you underneath My burnt and bony knees Older in the doorway I was a man of high renown Bury me here Ah.